Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Ishin ROTG L1 Pro 5.8 GHz OTG video receiver. In this video I'm going to quickly point out the differences between the Pro version and the previous one, compare their latency and then head outdoors and see how they perform side by side. Inside the box along with the ROTG L1 Pro receiver you're getting a linear antenna with an LPSMA antenna connector. And also these two cables, one is a micro USB to micro USB connector and the other one is a micro USB to USB Type-C connector. Just like the ROTG01, the Pro version will allow you to receive 5.8 GHz video feed on your computer, both PC and Mac, and also on your mobile Android device. Unfortunately, it does not support iOS and if you're looking for an iOS solution, you should check the G model and the Ishin R051, which I've previously reviewed. In terms of Android compatibility, these devices are compatible with most of the current Android devices. I've tested them with most of the Samsung Galaxy devices and also with this cheap Ligu S8 phone. However, it's not compatible with all the Android devices in the market. So if you want to make sure that your device is supported, you can install the GoFPB app. And then you need to use an OTG adapter and connect a USB camera to your phone. And if it's going to be discovered over here, it means that your device is supported. I know that web cameras currently are not that common. So worst case, you can just buy this OTG device and see if it works. And if it's not going to work on your Android device, you can just use it on your computer. And by the way, if the ROTG01 didn't work for you, it's not going to change with the Pro version since it's using the same drivers. So after this short introduction, let's see what has been changed with the Pro version. First of all, you can see that the ROTG01 features only one button. So short pressing it is going to increase the frequency and long pressing it is going to initiate the band scan. On the Pro version, we can find two buttons. The right one is going to increase the frequency by short pressing it and the left one is going to decrease it again by short pressing it. Long pressing each of these buttons is going to initiate the scan similarly to the ROTG01. Another major difference is that the ROTG01 does not support audio and the Pro version does support it. So if your quadcopter transmits audio, it's going to be recorded with the Pro version where this option wasn't available with the ROTG01. The last difference according to Ishin is that the receiver of the Pro version is more sensitive than the receiver of the ROTG01. And later in this video, when I'm going to compare these two receivers side by side, we will be able to see if this claim is true. Finally, in terms of dimensions, as you can see, the Pro version is a little bit bigger than the ROTG01 and it is using the same casing of the ROTG02, which features a diversity receiver. The case in both receivers reveals that the ROTG01 Pro is almost identical to the ROTG02 and the only difference is that the ROTG01 Pro is missing the second receiver. Now I've got the ROTG Pro connected to both my smartphone and the Hokkaido Little Pilot FPV screen. It is possible to connect both simultaneously using this connector which is located on the bottom of the receiver. It is also present on the bottom of the ROTG01 and it will enable you to power the OTG receiver externally using a 5V input and will also enable you to output the received audio and video into an FAB screen. The only problem is when using this connector you won't be able to tell which frequency the receiver is locked on. So you can see by pressing the frequency up and down button, we can see the indication over here, but it's not going to be present on your FPV screen. After connecting a quadcopter, you can see that we can see the image and we can also initiate the scan by long pressing either buttons. So you can see now over here, it's scanning for the best signal and also the video is displayed here, but you won't be able to see the frequency indications since this data is added by the software. After it completed the cycle of scanning, you can see that it's found the best signal and it's currently locked on. So if you'd like, you can use this connector by itself. However, it's a little bit problematic because I think that it is important to make sure that you are on the correct frequency. So now I'm going to measure the latency of both RTG01 Pro and the previous version using the FEV screen and the smartphone. In order to do so, I'm going to turn off the light and then I'm going to see how long does it take for the screen to get completely dark. Starting with the ROTG01 Pro, you can see that after turning off the light, we can still see the image on the FEV screen and on the smartphone because of the latency. The video was recorded at 240 frames per second, so each frame is about 4 milliseconds. Now let's count the frames. You can see that after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 frames, the screen went completely dark on the FEV screen. 
So the latency when using the video out is about 20 milliseconds. And now let's measure the latency on the smartphone. So now we counted five frames. So let's continue. So after about 20 frames, which is about 85 milliseconds, the screen went completely dark on the smartphone. So the latency using the RTG One Pro on the smartphone is almost four times the latency of the FPV screen. And again, the results are about 20 milliseconds on the FPV screen and about 85 milliseconds using the smartphone. Now let's see the results of the previous version. So over here, I turned off the light and you can see at this point, the room is completely dark. After one, two, three, four, five frames, which is about 20 milliseconds, the screen of the FEV screen went completely dark. So I think that the latency of the ROTG01 Pro is about the same as the ROTG01. Now, even though 80 milliseconds is not that bad, I still recommend to get a dedicated pair of FEV goggles in order to fly FEV because the flight experience you're going to get with the OTG device even after splitting the screen and using a set of VR box goggles such as this one is not going to be as nearly as good as using a dedicated set of FEV goggles because the image quality is going to be much better using the FEV goggles and also the video is going to be much smoother. A good use for the OTG receiver is to share your flight experience with friends to record DVR footage directly to your phone and also for testing the VTX so for example, if you would like just to tune stuff on Betaflight OSD, you can use either a computer or your mobile device as a screen. On the next part of this review, I took both receivers outdoors and compared them side by side using the same Elmway Cloverleaf antenna. And also as a reference, I also compared it with the Furious FV TrueD 3.7 receiver using the same Elmway Cloverleaf antenna and this patch antenna from LACC. In terms of range, with both receivers, I got to more than two kilometers in an open field, which is pretty impressive. And in my opinion, the results are pretty close. So if you already have the ROTG01, I don't think that you should upgrade to the ROTG01 Pro. But if you're in the market for a new OTG receiver, I think that you should opt in for the Pro version. It costs only $1 extra, and it features two buttons that will allow you to easily configure your frequency. It supports audio, and it also comes with two connectors, so you have the option to use a micro USB to micro USB connector and also a micro USB to USB Type-C connector. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful. If you have any questions about any of these devices, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.